Welcome to Enlightened Conversations podcast, brought to you by YWCA Hanover. I'm your host, Lisa Smith, and I am so pleased that you have chosen to listen and learn with us as we explore a wide range of topics related to the YWCA's mission to eliminate racism, empower women, and bring peace, justice, freedom, and dignity to all people. Today, I have the privilege of talking with Carla Christopher. Carla is a Lutheran pastor, diversity consultant, cultural competency educator, a poet activist, and assistant to the Lutheran Bishop for Justice Ministries. As a matter of clarification, we are recording this near the end of June, actually the last day of June, which is Pride Month when even in the midst of festivities celebrating the diversity of human expression in the LGBTQIA plus community, we hear of one state after another passing hate-filled laws against people in the community, as well as just this week, the Supreme Court weighing in on the side of hate. It's enough to make you lose hope. But at the YWCA, we have learned that we always turn to Carla when we need hope. So Carla, welcome. What signs of hope can you bring us today? Well, it has definitely been a challenging season, but I will say that the mobilization that has already begun across the country is incredibly exciting. And um, not only are there seasoned activists who remember the first round of things like Roe v. Wade and LGBTQ marriage equality passing, but there's a whole new generation of young adults and youth leadership that are excited to get involved. And we're seeing a lot of movement, not just on local, um, as in statewide or national issues, but on community-based initiatives. There's huge movement in the area of conversion therapy bans. We now have um, more than 20 states that have issued some level of a ban on conversion therapy. And here in Pennsylvania, we have a governor executive order ban in place, which means that no government funding or government agencies or employees can practice conversion therapy on minors but we are also looking at legislation that is being drafted and being brought by some of our local uh, council people in their areas. So we're looking at how do we do countywide and how do we do municipal bans on the practice of conversion therapy. And it's exciting because that is very much based on best practice in the field that this idea of we can take particularly young people and put them in these therapies and uh, make them ungay or untrans um, and turn them back straight or cisgender. And there's so much evidence. In fact, the American Psychological Association has officially condemned this type of therapy saying it is not only ineffective, but incredibly harmful and in youth and young people frequently leads to self-harm, addiction, depression, anxiety, even attempted or completed suicide. So this is life-saving work to be pushing on these conversion therapy bans. And there's been a lot of challenging school board laws put in place around bathrooms, pronouns, sports teams, things Mm -hmm. that trans students um, are really limited and excluded from full community life. But it's actually places like the YWCA, um, local churches even, um, local libraries, uh, Planned Parenthood Keystone in this area, places that are stepping up and saying, we will create safe spaces for trans youth to be affirmed by using their pronouns respectfully, using their chosen names, giving them the ability to just be without judgment and having full access and participation. So the way community agencies 
are answering the call, that's hopeful to me too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's about time. You know, we have, we've really gotten to the point where we have no other choice, but to kind of step up and take control ourselves and try to um, get some things in place. The problem uh, obviously is that even though we do that, then when we think we have things settled, then stuff turns around and we have issues like the Supreme Court, um, you know, recently saying that, oh, it's okay if you don't want to serve um, a gay couple and design a website for them uh, for their wedding. And, um, you know, it's okay if you don't want to um make your decision about the composition of your incoming freshman class based on a good cross-section of diverse population. So it, it makes it disheartening for people. But I think you're right. There is hope in the fact that we continue to work on it at the level that we can. And, um, you know, I, I take some heart from that. So you had mentioned at one point that there was a house bill, um, House Bill 300, that was also a hopeful piece of, of legislate, legislative activity that we could kind of gather around. Can you talk That's about right. that a little bit? So there's a lot of exciting new things happening right here in Pennsylvania that are, <clears throat> excuse me, incredibly encouraging. The governor uh, just signed uh, and recommissioned um, the paperwork for the LGBTQ um, Affairs Commission for Pennsylvania. So that is something that was started under our former governor, Governor Tom Wolf. Mm -hmm. So there is now uh, a brand new, refreshed and ready to rock and roll commission on LGBTQ affairs that is multicultural, that is multi-gender, multi-age, contains representatives from all over the state who are coming together to make sure that news is shared, advocacy is shared, and make sure that the statewide offices are advised by actual LGBTQ people, that there is voice in creating this law and legislative work. So that's really exciting that that is back and that it is better than before. That's they're great. also, right? And there's also been the Pennsylvania Fairness Act is an equity bill for LGBTQ Pennsylvanians. So many people do not realize that being LGBTQ is not its own protected class in Pennsylvania. So you can be fired from your job because someone finds out that you are a part of that community and says, you know what, I don't want to rent my apartment to lesbians. So you're evicted. I don't want to hire a gay man. Um, I don't want uh, a trans employee. So you are terminated. And there's nothing that can be done about that. And so the Pennsylvania Fairness Act is one way to try and uh, end that legal discrimination. Um, and it has passed, it managed to get out of committee because this has been over 10 years in the making. And so we made it actually out of committee and it made it to the uh, state house where it was passed by the representatives. And so it now moves on to Senate. Now Senate has enough folks who have said they do not support it, that it's very likely that this bill will not make it out of the Senate. And so there's you know just real preparation for that. But the excitement that more people are getting eyes on this and that polls are happening that show that Pennsylvanians are in overwhelming support of LGBTQ being a protected class, that's huge. But there's even more hope, which is that the Pennsylvania Fairness Act is only one way and it's the most direct way that we could make sure LGBTQ protections exist. But the Pennsylvania Human Relations Commission is the arm of the law, um, the arm of government that manages hate crimes and discrimination, violations um, 
that occur against protected classes. So the Pennsylvania Human Relations Commission and their director, Chad Lassiter, really mobilized um, when they realized that it was unlikely for the Pennsylvania Fairness Act and House Bill 300 to make it through the Senate. And so they started working with um, national uh, organizations like the Human Rights Campaign and the Trevor Project and looking at other states that had protections in place and found that they can use existing protection and expand that definition. So for example, uh, gender, which is, a which is a protected class, right. that discrimination against gender can be expanded to include transgender individuals or gender non-conforming individuals. So a lot of LGBTQ um, people who, if they were discriminated because the gender of their partner is not the expected gender, then they are now, right, protected ah. because of gender discrimination protection. Mm -hmm. So a lot of those issues around housing and job termination, because either you don't dress and look like who you are um, supposed to, according to more uh, oppressive paradigms, or if your partner isn't the person that folks think they should be, they folks think your partner's the wrong gender, that can now be covered under gender discrimination. The same way they're also expanding um, the definition of racial protections for traits traditionally um, associated with a particular race. So things like the Crown Act that may not get passed in Pennsylvania are now covered under race discrimination. Oh, you think certain hairstyles, certain clothing styles, certain types of head coverings that are traditionally associated with black or extremely curly haired people that you've been saying, oh, that's not professional, that's against our dress code. Well, that is a trait associated with a particular ethnic group. So it now falls under race as a protected class. So those things have all been posted mm -hmm. on the Pennsylvania Human Relations Commission website and Facebook page. And so they have to be posted for 60 days, but they'll go into effect in August. So that's exciting news to make sure really gets out there that even if you can't contact your local police force um, or that seems like there's not a lot that you can do, you can make a complaint with the Pennsylvania Human Relations Commission in Harrisburg. And there are ways you can do that over the phone, through their website, um, and every part of Pennsylvania is covered, whether you have a local Human Relations Commission or not. Right, right. Yeah, HRC is pretty much in every corner of, of Pennsylvania. You know, there's nowhere that they don't cover. Um, I think it's interesting, though, Carla, that they had to um, go, take steps to make sure that that definition was expanded, because I think most of us were or at least I was guilty of this, and I, I think that I'm not unusual in this, assumed that that expanded definition was the current definition. Um, you know, even in the, the Pennsylvania Fairness Act, it never occurred to me that LGBTQ individuals were not covered under the term gender. You know, I just, the assumption in my head was, well, of course, then that would also include all of these expanded issues that you just mentioned. And um, apparently not. And apparently when it comes to law, you've got to spell out all the P's, all the Q's, dot the I's, cross the T's, get the commas in the right place, or you don't have a case. So um, I'm glad somebody's looking out for that. You know. Now, one of my favorite Pennsylvania organizations is Pennsylvania Youth Congress. Yes. And the Pennsylvania Youth Congress is actually led by young adults and does a lot to train and support and empower youth and young people in doing the work 
of legislative advocacy. So this is writing those opinion editorials and those letters to the editor, going and visiting your local legislators. They really do keep track of emails and phone calls as well as office visits around different issues. But one of my favorite things is a tool on their website that is um, a legislation finder where you can look and see what legislation around LGBTQIA plus issues is moving currently or is active currently in Pennsylvania. Um, I think there is a reason that it's as confusing as it is, as challenging as it is, and that there is as little um, publicity and marketing. Folks in our lovely capital, many of them I think are very well intended, but there are others that don't want the common person to be aware, like, wait, there's not these rights, but the national organizations and government made a point of saying Title IX, um, which covers gender mm -hmm. and uh, race and a lot of these issues in schools and um, in places that are affected by national law, um, they expanded their definitions multiple years ago. It just makes sense that Pennsylvania would have done the same. But unfortunately, our Commonwealth law is very different even from other state laws and mm -hmm. systems. So this idea that we don't have one countywide school district and one countywide police force and one countywide government so that there can be more equity across the region. Every kid in the county gets the same protections, the same um, curriculum materials, the same amount of dollars, the same good books. No, we have one county that will have 16, 18 different school districts in it. Mm -hmm. And we will have mayors and city councils that are you know, I think York County, where I live, has 72 municipalities. Right. That means in one county, there are 72 different mayors. That is wild to people in states that do not have a Commonwealth system. Mm -hmm. But here, mm -hmm. what it does is make it much more difficult to get laws and protections passed. We have our own Human Relations Commission in York City, where I live which is great. But if you go outside those 5.3 square miles, you cross the street and those protections no longer exist. Mm -hmm. We have conversion therapy bans in a great number of cities across Pennsylvania that mostly the Trevor Project, local organizers um, and Pennsylvania Youth Congress have worked together to help move. But you move to the other end of the county. You just get a different apartment when your lease expires. And now all that work you put in to get those protections, it doesn't exist in your new school district, your new city, your new neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And that's why I believe we really need to push for these statewide protections and get a better understanding of how our government works, who our legislators are, you know, how can we be empowering people to become activists in this system? We don't all have to love the way that the laws are working lately around protecting marginalized people. But if we don't know, we're guaranteed to not be of good help and support. Absolutely. And I think step one is to make sure that we know what the laws are that apply to us and where those laws change. You know, how far can I go um, down the street before the law is now different? Um, I live on the end of York County that changes to Adams County in about a mile. So uh, is the law the same in Adams County as it is in York County? I don't know, that would be worth looking into. And it's interesting to me as the world gets smaller, from a communication standpoint, the assumption is as a consumer of news 
that whatever is said on TV or in the general or the national news, that this was the decide, this is what was decided. Well, then that's the way it is. It filtered down over all of us, like a rain that washed over all of us. But that's not the way it works in this country. Each area decides on their own. I remember thinking a year ago when Roe v. Wade was overturned. Well, that's it. That's the end of it. And now here it's taken a year to see the impact. And the impact created a patchwork quilt out of the country as to where things have been turned upside down, where laws have not changed completely, but have changed some, where they've just created a maze that just makes people more confused and angry more than anything, and, and where they've totally turned the healthcare system up on, on its nose. So, you know, the same thing happens with these kinds of laws. Um, you know, it's, you can't look at some decision that comes down from the national government and say, this is what it's going to be because it, it gets reinterpreted to local. So we have to start locally and figure out what's the situation where I am. And then next step, what can I do? So, um, I, I did some, some investigation at your um, suggestion into that Pennsylvania Youth Congress. I was so impressed. They are mm -hmm. phenomenal. And one of the things that, that really took my eye was their list of companies, companies that are allies and companies that are not such allies. And mm -hmm. what really impressed me were the number of spots on the non-ally list that had been wiped clean, that you could see that there used to be X number of non-allies. And now that spot had been wiped clean because they had worked with that company and now they've turned them around, which was great to see that they had gotten some of those companies to be more supportive. So um, what suggestions would you have for our listeners, Carla, as to how to, um, other than following things like the Pennsylvania Youth Congress and, and that sort of thing, what would be your first step you would suggest to people to try to hang on to some hope and create some positive steps? I would say find out who is doing the good work in your community. Great places to start are nonprofit agencies that have made a point of being present at local prides, local marches. Those rainbow flags and signs of visibility, they really do make a difference because they mean, even in a contentious climate, we're willing to make a public statement that this is a welcoming place. So I knew from as soon as I walked in to YWCA Hanover, I saw the flags, I saw photos on the walls that had families of all genders. I looked at the programming on the website and I spotted that they were going to be at local prides and that they were going to be um, at local Juneteenth events and, and were having multicultural outreach. And so, you know, I recognized that that was a safe place and ended up being here by taking that very advice of becoming more involved with places I knew were doing the work. Um, there's a lot of wonderful congregations and faith spaces. There's some great organizations. Um, one of the places I'm on the board of is Planned Parenthood because I noticed that Planned Parenthood was holding a safe space group for LGBTQIA plus youth that did not have a place um, in their schools to gather. And I wanted to support that organization. The same with uh, a local library system who was offering that support to young people. So it may be in unexpected places. It might be churches, libraries, medical facilities, and then find how you can help, how you can volunteer, where you can get involved. Um, 
a great thing to do is learn about what's happening in your community legislatively too. Because of these small municipalities, these local laws, you can visit your local school district meetings. You can visit local um, city, township, or borough council meetings. You can even arrange visits by just calling the mayor's office or the um, municipal commissioner's office and saying, I'd love a meeting to sit down and ask some questions. These folks are accessible because they are close to home. So you can start getting informed by visiting those neighborhood association meetings and those school district meetings. And that's often really helpful because only people who live in those municipalities or in those school districts are usually able to speak at those meetings. So mm -hmm. if someone from the local um, YWCA or NAACP or something like that comes to speak at a school board meeting, if they are not from that school district, they don't have the ability to get on that microphone and speak up in behalf of those students who just want the right to use a gender neutral bathroom or use their pronouns or chosen name while they're in school, mm -hmm. right? So right. that's something you can do that these larger organizations cannot. It's something special that you can really make a difference with at home. Mm -hmm. And then also being a visible witness. Um, one of the most beautiful things, and Hanover Pride is actually coming up in a few weeks at the end of That's July right. um, from when this episode is being taped. One of the wonderful things that allies and friends have been doing is taking a training with a group called the Silent Witness Peacekeepers. Um, they are affectionately known as the Rainbow Umbrella Folks. And so they get uh, one day uh, bystander training on how to be helpful and supportive if there are protesters at local events and they stand with their rainbow umbrellas and they will block protesters um, so that folks don't have to see them and their hateful signs or hear them shouting. And if there's a, a place where people need to move in front of or cross in front of protesters, the silent witness peacekeepers will actually escort and just accompany folks and say, hey, just look at me. You know, you don't have to look at them. You're not having to walk in there by yourself. I'm with you, right? They don't engage. They are not violent. They are not security. They are just escorts and a peaceful presence, a caring presence that have made a huge difference at local prides this season and local marches and demonstrations. So that's something that anyone can be a part of and do. We do need to be the change we want to see in this world, but there's lots of accessible, inexpensive, and you know, local right at home ways that we can all do that. that that's great. I love that idea about the silent witness peacekeepers. You know? And they get us all out there with a rainbow umbrella. And, you know, <laughs> if there, there's there's nothing better to keep the hate away, perhaps, than an umbrella. So, and uh, I'm going to look that up, see if we can get a group of us to, to go through that training. I think that would be wonderful. So, Carla, as usual, you have given us some hope, given us some, some marching orders, as it were, uh, things we can do and um, rather than sitting in despair and throwing tomatoes at our TV when we hear one more terrible thing that happens, you know, we actually have some concrete things that we can do, you know, follow the, the legislation through the Pennsylvania Youth Congress and their website, uh, write to our senators, uh, maybe write a note to our governor and tell them, hey, way to go, keep up the good work, because, mm -hmm. you know, you you don't only write to complain. You can always write to say, we love what you're doing. Keep keep at it. Absolutely. Um, take that training for the um, silent witness peacekeepers and then do your research. Check on local legislation, local rules. Know what's going on in your neighborhood and find out who else is fighting the good fight and see if you can lend a hand. 
because there's always somebody that could use another volunteer, even if it's nothing more than stuffing envelopes or standing under an umbrella. It's not a bad way to make a, a good statement. Um, That's fantastic. I am um, the queen of showing up to drop off food, uh, clothes for gender affirming clothes closets, where trans youth don't have to go to a store where they feel uncomfortable. They can come to a special clothing exchange that's being hosted by a local organization. Um, even if you don't have tons of time, there are ways that you can um, make financial donations or be donating just things like clothes, food, snacks, so that when local uh, gay student alliances or gay straight alliances are meeting at the school um, or at a local church or organization, they have food and drink and stickers or t-shirts, whatever it is. They are so excited when people show up with something that is for them. Yeah. So no matter how much time you have as well as money or resources, there's a way you can lend that hand, help get involved and be part of the joy and the hope that's happening. Absolutely. Show that you're an ally in one way or another. Um, thank you, Carla. You've given us a spark of hope, and we will continue to work on that, and we will be back to, to talk to you again, and hopefully to hear the good news about a lot of this legislation passing through and becoming law that... Um, that some of these issues may indeed in the future be a matter of history rather than a matter of current problems. So thank you. We appreciate your effort today and um, have a good rest of Pride Month, what little bit is left of it. And we'll just keep carrying that pride through the rest of the year. Sounds great to me. Thanks so and much for great. having me and thank you everybody at home. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for sharing your time with us today. Stop by again when you have a chance to listen and learn with another enlightened conversation. Just check the YWCA Hanover website and social media for new release dates and topics. If you have topics you would like to learn about, please email me, Lisa Smith, at lsmith at ywcahanover.org. And as always, keep learning.